I think we are probably just about ready to get started. Gabe, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, I don't know if many of these people have had the opportunity to meet you yet. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I see some familiar names on here. Hi, Alicia. Um, hi, Katie. Hi, Rebecca. Um, hi, Todd. A few, a few folks who I've had the pleasure of interacting with uh, on video calls, over email, et cetera. Um, so my name is Gabe Blanchett. I'm here, obviously, with Chase. I think many of you are familiar, if not all, with Chase. Um, and Chase has been a wonderful colleague uh, as I've ramped up at Lean Law. Um, Chase has been instrumental in, in helping me understand what our product does in the lives of timekeepers, in firm administrators, in principals, in attorneys, uh, in of all shapes and sizes. So, um, so just by by way of background, I uh, studied engineering, undergraduate, um, and have been building products really even before college. Um, but throughout my twenties and early thirties, I've been building products for technology companies. I've built. Um, I built internet connected devices. I built a home gardening system uh, complete with an app um, that helped you monitor your garden. Um, I've built uh, SaaS applications, um, so software as a service applications like, like Lean Law uh, for different user groups, um, both sort of uh, large consulting firms like McKinsey, um, as well as education um, providers, uh, K through 12 schools, et cetera. So I've got kind of a wide range of um, all with the lens of how do we build a great product for a certain set of, of users or customers. Um, what attracted me to Lean Law uh, was, well, first, I'm based in Boise, Idaho, where our sort of headquarters is. And I, I met the, the founding team, Jonathan and, and Gary and Fred and, um, and Chase and, and crew, um, and really just liked the energy and the culture and the vision they had for how Lean Law can impact, uh, you know, mid small to mid-sized law firms. Um, and, but I also really liked how engaged our customer base is. And so we're gonna to touch on that a, a few times today in, the, in just the 30 minutes that we have, but I'm here to really be, uh, to really combine the, the requests and the thoughts and the ideas that come from our customer base, from all of you uh, listening to this masterclass. I'm here to combine that with a vision that we're constantly refining for what the future of professional services and law firms looks like. And if we can do that well, then we want to do, we want to build a product that not only uh, solves the, the, the needs that you know you have, we need compensation tracking to do this. We need time tracking to integrate with Microsoft Office 365. We, those are things that we're, we're hearing and we're cataloging, we're prioritizing. And I'm so excited to show you sort of how that's forming into a product today. But some of the things that we're not necessarily hearing, but we know are on the radar uh, because we you know, read a lot of the same publications that you do on legal news and, and sort of the advancing the industry. Uh, we combine that with reading a lot of uh, technology sort of uh, news innovations. So things like how are, how's artificial intelligence gonna impact law firms uh, specifically? Those are like trends that we're actively engaging with, not just reading about, but experimenting, prototyping with. And when we can combine the best insight from that with what, what our customers are asking for, we want to, over time, develop a really unique offering, not just uh, sort of a time tracking and billing software, but really a backbone that anticipates needs and integrates some of these new technologies available in different industries, all to deliver them to you and your firms. Um, so that's, you know, I, I think it, Hopefully, my introduction is mostly by way of, of showing you that I'm committed to building a great product and a great pro product culture here. Um, and master classes are this awesome way that we have of, of communicating. Um, Chase, before I get started and, and share screen with the actual sort of presentation, is there anything you want to add to that? Anybody you want to welcome? Yeah, I just wanted to really quickly, you know, at a super simple level, just on what we're going to be talking about today, what Gabe's going to be showcasing is some of the smaller improvements that he and the product engineering product and engineering teams have made over the last couple of months, um, what that looks like for you all, uh, how that improves your daily workflows and lives, but also kind of pulling back the veil on what Gabe's focus on quality and making those impactful changes you might not have been aware you wanted really, really benefit you. So this month is definitely not, you know, we've released the newest version of trust accounting. It's really a small, let's get in the details and talk about why the changes we're making 
make sense and how they make a big difference in the the way that you all run your firm and work on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, awesome, Chase. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Um, and we've got, uh, you know, I, this is my first masterclass, although I've watched the ones that uh, Chase, the team, Fred, uh, Nick Bachman previously have done. Um, this is my first. And so I want to bring a lot of energy. We're going to throw out some uh, some ideas. We're going to show you some of the future of the product. And as Chase mentioned, we're going to share some of the small tweaks that we've made recently, which you know are immediately impacting your your day to day workflow. Um, but we're not going to because there's so many attendees here, which is just awesome. Thank you all for spending a bit of your Tuesday with us. Um, we, we're not going to open it up for live Q and A. Like um, you know, nobody can join the webinar and, and actually speak. But there is a Q and A um, sort of widget within Zoom here. So if you can ask your questions there, if we if if we see them, Chase and or I, we could answer them sort of mid presentation. Um, we will save some time at the end for question and answers. And if we don't get to those during this session, we will we are absolutely downloading sort of the transcript and the Q and A, and we will get back to you personally. And if it's just sort of an insight you have or something like that, then we'll make sure to catalog it um, and and put it into our product system. Um, so thank you all for, for not only listening, but engaging in that way. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. Uh, yep. Let me. What's up, Chase? I was just going to say, so when everyone here submits feature requests to the support team or a direct feature product, Gabe is the one that reviews them and takes that insight back to the engineering team and decides uh, what the, the smartest way of implementing some of that feedback is. And I, I see that question from Lynn. I'll answer that right off the bat. Lynn, the quickest way to get that answered is actually just to ask the support team about the specifics of uh, that leads formatting. They've got all the information they'll need to be able to help you get that uh, submitted to the client. I know those insurance clients can be pretty tricky to work with sometimes. All right, Gabe. Awesome. All right, so all can, we see my, can we see my screen here? Yep, looks great. Awesome. Uh, so today we're going to talk mostly UX, um, so user interface and or user experience and UI user interface. And I'm going to talk more broadly about how we are evolving, how we co-design with our customers, with, with you. Um, so first, we're going to talk about things that have been released and are available. We're going to talk first about some, some small UI tweaks, um, and, and we'll just kind of go through them quickly just to expose some of the, the changes that we're making um, in the short term. And then number two, uh, I'll show you a product portal, uh, which is a place where we can start to collaborate a lot more frequently. And, and you, while the support team and that led by Chase and, and Dave Churchill is, is still a great resource and we, we love our support team, there are other ways for you to submit ideas and, uh, and refine. So we'll talk about that. Then we'll talk about what's coming up. I'd love to show you all uh, a little bit of a mock-up of the future, get some ideas flowing. And then if you have ideas, good, bad, uh, what's possible, what's not possible, I'd love for those to come back to us in the form of that product portal, which I'll share the link for here. Um, then we'll, if we have time, we'll, we'll do some Q&A. Uh, Lynn, thanks for another uh, another question there. I think Chase can, can handle that. Um, yep. And then, uh, and then we will introduce April's masterclass. I think we're actually going to delay the, the artificial intelligence one. So we'll cover what April's masterclass topic will be at the end of this discussion. But hint, it's not artificial intelligence. So to just start out with, uh, with a quote that, that, makes me, that makes me think about when we're designing new interfaces. And, and really, you know, the team has been operating with, uh, with certain design principles. Um, since obviously for the for the years that it's operated, but I now have a chance to come in and, and put some fresh lens on how we solve problems. Um, and so I love this quote by Martin LeBlanc, uh, a user interface is like a joke. If you have to explain it, it's not that good. And so we're gonna we're gonna try to bring that uh, that mentality into our UX and UI design so that when you're thinking about that billing workflow and how it could be better, we're gonna try to anticipate your needs at every step. You know, for for those of you who run you know, mid-sized law firms who have, you know, a different firm administrator from the managing, uh, the responsible attorney on a given matter for a given billing period, that means how do we actually have the user inter interface anticipate the needs of, you know, uh, making sure that time entries, expenses, fixed fees have been reviewed prior to coming to the billing workflow. 
Um, and how can you see that they have been reviewed and you don't have to go chase down individual timekeepers or attorneys? Questions like that are gonna spur a better design of our user interface. Uh, right now I'm giving a specific example in the billing workflow, but we can we can probably all, or certainly I can think of a lot of situations in the timekeeping experience, in the reporting functionality, in the distributions, in the compensation reporting um, that could be better. Um, and so that's that's gonna be a big goal here. Now talking just a little bit about some, some user interface tweaks. Um, one thing, so let's start with this. I'm gonna show um, some, just some small tweaks. Uh, so first in the billing workflow, uh, we released a new filtering. Uh, most of you have, are probably familiar with this, uh, this new user interface here, specifically around filtering. Uh, we wanted the ability to uh, to collapse those filters and give you a lot more room once you've set your filters to actually do the type of work uh, that that you need to do in the billing, in the ready to bill all the way through um, to sending uh, payment links, et cetera. Um, so that's a little bit of a tweak. And then on the left side, we've just cleaned it up a little bit and also given you the ability to collapse that. And so when you see these little carrots, these little uh, these little divots in the product, that probably means something that that is going to mean. Let me give a definitive on that. That we're we're creating some collapsibility and some customizability to what you see on the screen, and that's so that you don't have static things that you're not actually using on the screen, um, but you've got the ability to kind of minimize them. Uh, you can toggle over these and still see what they are, and you're going to start to see this pattern in various places in the application because they think it's a strong U UX pattern. Uh, that's going to become more familiar across different pages. Same with this filtering workflow. There's different, or this filtering uh, sort of drop down and mechanism. Um, we're always thinking about how to provide the right filtering functionality across all sorts of data, whether in, we're in reports, ready to bill, time entries, whatever it is. Uh, but we want to create some consistency. So those are those are a few tweaks to give you some more more room to play in the billing page. Um, Let's discuss the uh, the email activity log a little bit. So for, let's just go into, into the billing. So email invoice. So this is just some example data in an email activity. So we have, uh, so I wanna own up to one thing, which is that we don't think that the user interface under the status tab is as coherent or easy to read as it should be. And so that's an area that we're actually going to, um, you know, you can see when people have clicked, uh, when an email has been opened, delivered, and clicked. Um, but we want to clean that up and we're creating some better user interface around that. But what we've heard from clients and what spurred this is that clients who are starting to use lean law payments as a, as a way of facilitating their invoice delivery with custom emails um, where they can, you know, much more than QuickBooks or other payment providers, they can customize sort of what the uh, what their end clients uh, see and how they experience the invoice that they have to pay, as well as the actual electronic payment links. Um, and so we've gotten a lot of positive feedback on that. We've got a few things within Lean Law Payments that we're excited to, to continue to improve. But one of the areas that we've already released this, this big update on is when you send off an invoice, how do you track in one place in Lean Law without going to different applications and trying to find it in, in, in your email service, et cetera. How do you see whether they've received, opened, and clicked on the emails that you've sent them, the invoices that you've sent them? So this starts to give you some of that insight and, vis and visibility into your end client's experience once they receive your invoice. A lot more to talk about there in terms of future vision, uh, everything from client portals to, um, to more customizable invoices, the PDFs themselves. That's all in the pipeline here, and that's all. Those are all things that we're going to be working on. Um, but right now, you can you can see you can have insight into how they're processing your emails, when they've opened, when they've been delivered, etc. Um, I'm I'm not seeing any questions on this, uh, which means I'm doing a great job explaining. Uh, I I assume, um, but or and that you know many of you who are using Lean Law Payments have already found and commented on this functionality and helped to refine it to what it is today. And, and some tweaks that we have in the pipeline right now, which will be released over the coming weeks and months. Um, distributions and payments now have their own, uh, their own, I don't have much data here, 
uh, but they have their own pages. I don't have much data in my demo account here, but they have their own pages. So we've broken those out. And in the U in the UI prototype, I'm going to share in the next part of the of the master class here. Uh, we'll be able to see that those are going to get broken out a little bit further to give them some more breathing room. Uh, because there, it's sort of a different workflow and mentality when you're billing a client versus when you're collecting from a client versus when you're distributing or creating allocation uh, and an understanding of sort of revenue allocation across uh, across partners or attorneys um, or team members. Um, but they have their own pages. We've started kind of breaking them out from the from from being deep in the workflow or deep stuck deep in the reports tab. Um, I'm going to, oh, and another another big thing that we've done with this page is just brought the email, uh, the invoice delivery and email activity out into the open here. Um, as you'll see in the, in the next prototype that I share, the mock-up, we're going to give this more breathing room as well. Um, but this used to be deep in the firm settings um, right here. And there was sort of the way that you saw um, email activity was actually deep in here. Um, versus now it's it's in the bill it's been exposed in the billing workflow um so that those are some strong changes um and quickly related to that yeah, yeah. a question from yunga about uh when you see those email in those invoice delivery statuses uh you do only see those if you've got lean law payments set up so if you're just sending them through quickbooks uh, as you would have prior to lean law payments uh, those don't those quickbooks emails don't show up in the email status so there you go. Yeah, ho hopefully that's clear. Please ask a follow-up question. Um, but you know, a big focus of ours this year is really helping firms build a trusted financial relationship with their end clients. And so to do that effectively, we want you to be able to control the experience of how and when and how it looks like that your clients receive an invoice or a payment link from you. And on what cadence is the follow-up? And is are the email follow-ups? And do you charge interest on overdue balances? And all of those activities, which previously were split between lean law and QuickBooks and lean law and other things like law pay, now we're, we're consolidating into lean law to give you one cohesive experience around billing and collecting uh, instead of being across disparate tools. Um, so Yunga, I, I believe that should answer your question. If you want more information on lean law payments, we have been sending out some emails. Um, there is, if you haven't signed up for lean law payments, there's sort of an in-app uh, description of what it does. There's also a page on our website that describes what it does. And I just wanna share that this is this is a major area for us. Build it, helping you build that trusted financial relationship with your clients is, is a, a years long, if not entire company long journey for us. And we think that relationship is going to change over time. Uh, certain end clients, you know, larger, larger end clients have strict billing guidelines and, you know, a, a regimented way that they want you to present things. Whereas other, you know, smaller clients would really appreciate a certain level of transparency over what is, what, what is the work in progress that hasn't showed up in an invoice yet? How can I check that before an invoice gets sent? Those types of questions are what we're asking ourselves. And that is what Lean Law Payments is designed to really help facilitate a great financial relationship over the next years and months, uh, months and years. Um, so great, great question, Yunga. Um, thank you for that. Uh, I want to show off the, uh, so those are some of the UI tweaks that we've had over the past few weeks. Um, with the time remaining, I, I wanna make sure that we show this, which is, you know, it's playful. We've added some some gifts in there uh, to, to create some some smiles. Uh, but really, this is our way of continuing the conversation with you all, our our customers, at at a scale that maybe sometimes you don't need to have a conversation directly with customer support. You want to see what product at what Lina is going to evolve into. So let's let's take an example of integrations with other software systems. You know, we are asked for. Chase, Gabe, yes? real quick, yeah. What what is this? What exactly were you looking at here, and and how do they interact with it? Yeah, absolutely. So what you're seeing here is a website that we have designed. It's called our product portal. So it's Lean Law's product portal. You can log in. You can if we give you the link, which I will do right now. Uh, let me just do that in the chat here. 
it's it's well, also available through the lean law product itself, isn't it? Yeah, let's actually let's actually do that. So within the lean law product, great point, Chase. Thank you. So within the lean law product, under this question mark, we have added report bug, request feature, and product roadmap. So those are those are three new additions here, and they all actually take you to the this product portal, um, sort of different different aspects of this product portal. But let's click on product roadmap. So that's accessible to anybody who has the product. You will come to this page and you will see seeking feedback. So these are product ideas that we are currently still defining. We're looking actively for your feedback into how to make these awesome, how to make them useful for you and your entire firm. So I'll click into one in a moment, but let me keep going on the top here. That's seeking feedback. Second, in progress, you can see things that we are working on actively in engineering at the, at the moment. Now, for now, this does not include bug reports or quality issues. That's tracked separately. These are just feature requests. Uh, in the future, we'll seek to combine them all, give you one cohesive view. But for now, we're really talking about how the added functionality that would make Lean Law even better for you. So these are the things in progress and then released because we just released this, uh, this entire product portal. We don't have our big full list of releases that we've done over the past few months and years, um, but this will obviously build uh, over time. Uh, so let's jump into a specific, uh, you know, specific uh, ticket here. We are seeking feedback on integrations for software, for integrations with other software systems. What does this mean? Well, we're considering how to best support these, but what are other integrations that you'd need? Do, do we want integrations to Litify, to LawPay, to NetDocuments, to all of, these, all of these systems that your firm may be using for practice, some elements of practice management, for some elements of document management, et cetera? Please go in there, uh, tell us how important your feedback is. Say it's very important that Lean Law connects with net documents so that uh, so that matters in lean law surface the relevant documents that my time keepers are working on. Hopefully you can even get the more info you give, the more we have to go on. And so I encourage you even even with this, uh, why do you want you know links to the documents in your matter section? Um, and I can think of ten reasons, but uh, but we'd love to hear all that deep insight from you. When you enter your in, your email address there and click submit, we record your insight, and we also record the email that it came from, so you. And that means that as this product feature moves along in development, you will get email updates and have the opportunity to give more feedback, but also know when it's released. So this is a really powerful way uh, for us to be able to sort of collect feedback and make sure we're working on the most impactful product features with your feedback at every step in the way, not just some of your feedback at one point. Um, so we've got audit trail. So really thinking about, uh, about how do we actually create a system on time entries, on uh, expenses, fixed fees, invoices, where you can see what has happened to them over time. Uh, we've got a bunch of other things in here for you to look at and give us feedback on, all in that same uh, sort of method. So uh, thank you all for sort of engaging, uh, letting, letting me explain sort of how we envision this. Um, and on the back end, all of this comes in and feeds into this, this engine that we're building to be able to deliver better products, better prioritized product features faster. Let me, let me pause there. Uh, Alicia, thanks for saying email activity provides great insight. Yeah, we we love the, the you know, yeah, that's awesome to hear. We appreciate it. Um, so that is the product portal. Uh, we are we are a little bit short on time to get deep into the future of Lean Laws product. Um, but what I what I do want to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna put something on the screen here um, and just explain a little bit of it. So. What you're seeing on the screen here is a mock-up. This is not the live product. Um, and that's really important to understand here because, uh, because this is not training for what currently exists. It's a little bit of uh, sort of exposure to what we're thinking about uh, building, what we're planning on building. But I really wanna note that this is early enough that right now is the right time to give us feedback on this. 
Now, elements of what I'm about to show you are going to be part and parceled up and put into that Lean Law product portal so you can give feedback on specific feedback on specific functionality. Um, so th that's how you're going to give feedback in, on specifics here. But if you want to give feedback on the whole thing, please put it in the chat. Email me, Gabe at myleanlaw.com. Uh, email Chase, give it to the customer support team. Whatever channel it comes through, we love your feedback. We really appreciate your questions. We really appreciate your insights. We have a better system than ever before for capturing those and making sure you're aware of how we're prioritizing and building. So moving to what's actually on your screen right now, we're, uh, we're um, reimagining the Lean Law experience. And we're not gonna do this in one swoop and have to, you know, all of your timekeepers all of a sudden don't know where to find things. We're gonna, we're gonna sort of inch our way into a new paradigm uh, over the next few months and quarters where timekeepers have more capability to capture the effort that they're putting, even in contingency cases, you want to track time so that you really understand the profitability of, of, of outcomes. Uh, but especially on fixed fees, you want to understand profitability, even if you're not billing per hour. And if and if it's you know standard hourly billing, of course you're tracking time. We want to give you give timekeepers better ways to do that. So I'm going to explain that in just a minute here. But I want to spend actually most of the time we have left, which is just a few minutes, on that top bar. So ignore everything below that top bar, and let's just focus on those that top bar. You see how it is different from our current bar. Um, and the main difference is that we are starting to focus a lot on when, when any one of our users logs into Lean Law, what job are they trying to accomplish? What, what, in, what do they need to do? Why are they opening the program? Is it so that they can record time? Is it so that they can send bills? Is it so that they can download a CSV or you know, generate insights from some of the data in this system? By really focusing on the different personas that we have, so whether you're a firm administrator, an attorney, an, a, you know, a, a timekeeping attorney, a managing uh, a sort of a principal or a managing attorney, we've got these different personas and you're starting to see that reflected in this top bar. So capture and review is all about the individual timekeeper. Anybody who's tracking their time, internal or external, contingency, fixed fee, hourly billing, it's all in that capture tab. That's timers, that's integrations with uh, calendar systems, uh, email providers, et cetera. Um, and then it's in review. How can that you actually review items very quickly so that when they get into the billing tab and the billing workflow, that whoever's doing the billing knows that this is actually what they what they meant to submit. There's some level of verification there. Bill, collect, and distribute. We alluded to this earlier, right? Where uh, distributions and payments are going to, going to be, be given more breathing room in the product so that we can really think about, okay, you've generated this revenue. Um, you, you've, collect, you've, you've billed a client, you've collected. Where, do you, where, do you, where does that money go from there? These financial workflows don't stop at money coming into the firm. You also want to distribute those through payroll providers, you know, bank accounts, et cetera. And then, uh, and then report, you know, that's, that's pretty similar to what report has. Where do you drive insights, you know, uh, across work in progress, across compensation reporting, whatever it is. And then onboard, how do you bring, how do you establish that trusted financial relationship with your end clients right up front? So hopefully that gives you some sense of where we're going from a top level navigation in future uh, in future masterclasses, you're going to, we're going to dive into some of these individual pages and not only show you what we've launched, but show you what we're thinking about launching uh, because we want to create that two-way dialogue that both product portal and masterclasses are meant to deliver. So with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Chase to kind of wrap us up. Uh, but I want to say thank you so much to the, the many dozens of, of, of folks who tuned in today. Um, and I, you know, introduce myself as head of product at Lean Law and say, thanks for using our product. And we want to make it so much better this year. Awesome. Thanks, Gabe. It's been, been fantastic having you here to share all the exciting stuff that's been going on in product over the last couple of weeks and months and uh, taking a look at what's coming up over the horizon. He kind of hinted at AI. And that's been a real, real big, interesting point for us uh, over here at Lean Law to think about how we, how we best implement that and share that with our users you know, getting smarter about the way we do things and how we not just save time, but make make workflows interesting and more efficient in ways that we didn't even think possible before. So looking forward to that conversation coming up in the future. Uh, topic for next month, we're actually going to take another look at on why 
compliant trust accounting matters, kind of getting back to uh, some of, if if you've been here long enough, you might remember back when we used to do uh, kind of a best practices look at different features in lean law, why what we're doing makes sense for modern law firms. Uh, and that's what the focus of next month is going to be. So I hope that you'll join us. Thank you all so much for being here this month. It's fantastic to finally see you all again and finally get some of that interaction. And again, thank you, Gabe, for joining us this month. My pleasure. Thanks. Right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Take care.